Hey, what's going up, guys? This is a, another episode of Tales from the Stash. For those of you who are not familiar with this, what I do is I go to my stash that I have downstairs, I pick a kit, bring it back up, share it with you guys. And right now, I'm upstairs with good reason, because my wife and my son, he's a newborn. hes I like to be within earshot of either one of them, so in case you need something, I can run up and get something, go whatever I gotta do. And so, I come up here. I mean, usually I do this in a basement, but today I'm not gonna. And in case you're wondering why the tank top, it's been a long, hot day. As you can tell, I'm a little red, I'm a little beat. It, I work as a welder. So, <laughs> I, I know. When you, if I'm wearing t-shirts and jeans all day, I don't want to do that. I don't want to resume wearing that. No, 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 no. I've had enough of that for the day, and the ACs are on. Any yeah, crap. So, let's get on with what I'm going to go with. Oh, and one more thing. In case you see something in the background behind me or something, and you watch this video, let me know so I can be creeped out about it after the fact. <laughs> anyway, so what am I going to be talking about today? Well, I have, today I have this. This is Tamaya, or Tamaya, wrong answer, Phil. I have Hasegawa's A6 M80 and 148 scale. I actually have two boxes of this. I have the resin, one with the resin that was supposedly molded by Jaguar which I'll talk about a little bit. Don't mind me, the paranoia is kicking in. <laughs> Crap. And I also have the one in flea injection molded plastic, which was released by Hoskawa in a special edition box set back in, I think, 2006. As well, and what makes this one special is, like the other one I, I built before, which is the A6M1, this is actually the bookend of the entire Zero series line. Here's a brief history. This was the last Zero to be built. Only two of them, actually. And during the war, the engine just couldn't keep up with all the updates and the ornaments and the armor upgrades to the Zero. It was just losing performance. So what they did was they took the Kinsey 62 engine and replaced it. They replaced the CK-21 with it, with this engine, which actually improved the performance greatly. It redesigned, reshaped the cowl, and it removed all the, it removed the machine guns in, near the cowling area, but it stopped, the, it stopped the performance from deteriorating, and it became the best performing. However, as I said before, only two prototypes were made, and unfortunately, by the time they were getting ready to go into production with it, the war came to an end, and which was, and that was the end of it. So, that's the end result. This is it. This is that was finito. So I finally I got this in kit form. So for I haven't found any resin aftermarket items for the last variant and or or any conversion work. Like you said, the only things I found available were the Hasegawa kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Too much iced tea. <laughs> so let's get a look through the kit and let's go discuss. I mean, right off the bat. Here's the decals. Sorry for the brightness. It's bright lamp. And this is the instructions. The, instru the instructions are their typical Hoskawa call out. You know, Japanese, English. Hopefully, I'm not blinding you guys with it. There, that's a little better. It's, of course, your typical layout. It's typical exploded view. As you can see here. And, of course, your typical call-out of colors, as you can see. If, hopefully, we're blind you with it. And there's your typical call-out of colors, which is your GSI Krios, or Gun Sangyo, as we were familiar with back in the States. And there's your color. Here's, here's your, your decal placement. One is for the prototype, and the other one is for the, I think, Yokosuka Naval Flying Group, which was basically a training ground. Basically training and getting familiar, kind of like um, running through the paces with the replacement air group, carrier air groups in the U.S. Navy. <laughs> you kind of like that. And you know, I'm going to say calls, call, the call outs, colors, call outs are for Goon's Aquarius Hobby Color and Goon's Mr. Hobby, which is a acrylic lacquer. But if you have the proper reference material and cross-reference the colors, you should be in good shape, and you really shouldn't need that. Now... Let's get it on with the kit here. The kit's all, it, it, most of the parts of the kit are pretty similar in layout, you know. It's a general you know, fuselage starting 
which started with the A6 M5 on, and as you can tell, if you're familiar with their, the way everything's laid out, exhausts, won't be using these, won't be using these, will not be using the hubs and spinners, we definitely won't be using that. These will not be used save for the two fuselage halves at the starting point. Wing, you can use it if you want, I'm not gonna. However, the rest of the parts will be used, as you can see here, including the headrest, down flaps, the rest of the parts here, as you already know, what's not being used. Since I'm using a Kinsey 62 engine, which I'll be showing you in later, these won't be used, but the rest of the parts, once again, they will be. Make sure you pay attention to the cockpit. Um, I think it is, yes, yes it is, that one right there. Do not put machine guns in there. I'll explain that later. Of course, if you're familiar with their A6M7 kit, rockets and uh, wing field tanks, as you can see, these are nicely well done. And of course, here's the wing. This is the upper half I'll be using. I'm probably going to be using the fuel tank. Maybe, maybe not. Seat, of course. Won't be using that. That's for the A6M5C. Uh, but the wings, generally the same as the A6M5 Type 52 throughout as it goes. However, this is a new wing here. This is also available in the A6M7. The reason why is so it can, you could put either a bomb or rockets or even fuel tank in the middle. Of course, won't be using that. Got three here if you opt to, if you want to opt. And since this is the A6M8, this is a special edition. Here is the parts specific for this. You have this here. You have cowling. You have the radiator scoop, similar to one of the aircraft, I don't remember which, I think it's a Yokohama or something like that, I don't remember. This is the part you're going to be using in the cowling area since it's not carrying machine guns in there. And of course, there's the spinner and prop and exhaust. Now these exhausts are very unique to the A6M8, as you can tell by the by the cowling, the other half of the cowling, and of course the Kinsey 62 engine. You will be using this. So pay attention, there's your crankcase. That's how the kit works. Now, I don't, as I said before, I actually have the resin edition right here. Actually not resin, the special release before they came out with this one. Ports are very similar, but they're kind of disappointing, but once again, it's a special edition. The resin, this is resin here, the parts are supposedly molded by Jaguar at that time, which is around, puts it around the 99-2001 time frame. Now, per, I've actually inspected these. I'm a little uncomfortable with these, how mo well molded they are. They're not very well molded. I'm a little uncomfortable with them. So I, I just stuck it on the shelf and just left it up there and, and for the time being. However, I might use, I, what I might do is, since it's going to be a while before I get to this one, I might use the, uh, the extra parts and, and make resin copies of these for that edition. We'll see what happens. Uh, but otherwise, it's, everything else is the same way out. Now, let's get back to the decals. Now, the decals here, the, the special edition are standard Hasegawa printed. These are, once again, sorry about that, these are printed by Cartograph, which I've used on the prototype, on the uh, prototype kit, which were actually the A6M1 kit, which was the first one that started the, started the whole zero line. They're printed nicely printed. They actually conform very well, and they adhere very well, too. The, the inks are good quality. And if you use the right setting and solvent solution, you shouldn't have any trouble with it. I mean, it shouldn't trouble with the decals. I had no problems with it. They, they were just wonderful. Um, just take your time with them. Like I said before, now, I, as I said before, I've built the A6M1, and I've built the A6M5C, which is all very familiar with the Hasegawa. It's very, they fit together very well. They did their rare research very good on each variant. So if there's something specific that they're telling you in the instructions, pay attention to it because they will come in handy. And as I said before, they did the entire line. We're talking even little sub variants like the Night Fighter. Which really isn't a knife fighter. It's just upward firing gun, and you're just hoping to hit the target. That's all it really is. Uh, <laughs> I actually have that in my collection. I don't have all of Hasegawa's zeros. I have a couple of um. I do have a couple of Tamiya's new mold zeros and 
they're just phenomenal pieces of work. But for a while, until T I came with theirs, these were actually the zero kits. And as I said before, I built them before. The only things I could tell you is to be careful with is be wary of the canopy if you want. I do recommend getting the I do recommend picking up the Edward masks for this because they will help greatly. In my case, I'm gonna paint them free-handed because that's what I'm familiar with. Or I could try to mask them. Good luck in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not happening. Scribing, everything's fine. There, there should be very little filler and filling or and very little filling and sanding. It took me a little while. The only spot which seems to be common amongst all of their pro, all of their prop job kits is the underside where the wing meets the fuselage, but it's the underside. That seems the only trouble where where you're going to have trouble at. I just so be wary of that. Dry fit everything. The cockpit. It's not. It's not a. It's not a remarkable piece of art, but it's actually well done. If you want, if you choose, you can always replace it with an aftermarket cockpit. If you choose to, depending on which version. In my case, building them out of the building it out of the box, not a problem for me. I'm going to tell you though, when you build these things, be wary. Check the research. Do your research if you got books on this. And follow the and follow the colors instructions and colors carefully, because I actually see this when with both of these. One tells you use colors similar to Nakajima. The other tells you use colors similar to Mitsubishi. Long story short, the cockpit colors were two different colors. One was the Mitsubishi used a green that was more familiar with interior like a green zinc chromate, where it's just much more yellow. Whereas the Nakajima green, these were both cockpit colors, by the way. Nakajima green was more of a, I want to say mint, but no. It's a lighter, lighter, lighter green. So I recommend checking that accordingly. Um, otherwise, you shouldn't have any trouble with this. There really isn't very many pictures of, the, of this kit, of this variant of the Zero. We might find one or two, but you're not going to find a whole bunch, so you're just going to have to speculate. And in my case, I'm just building the prototype. Like you said, it's my bookend. This will be this will be my bookend right here. Now, I call it you know, the first prototype is when it started at all. And this will be the end of it. It's kind of like a series. It's kind of like a series of books. Um, otherwise, it's a good kit. It's not cheap. It's like around... You can get it anywhere from... 35 to 45 depending on where you order from in my case since it's a collector's item and it's a limited run it was not cheap for me i actually i paid a little more than i wanted to but i didn't have to pay on shipping because it was directly coming from japan <laughs> i know i know uh but it was the only way i was going to be able to get this one anyway because it was that hard to get but i, I like i said as i said i'm sorry for repeating myself and I'm running out of things to say, but it's just a great kit to begin with. And anything spooky yet happened, by the way? Okay, we're good. Now, I've been doing Tales from the Stash. Quick blurb here. I've been doing Tales from the Stash. I used to do it on a group called Model Monsters. I've mentioned it before in my last intermission video where I was in my in-laws' basement. And I used to do this a lot. Now I'm moving on to here on YouTube. And I'm just... And I'm still getting very comfortable with everything. It, by the time I was... I'm starting over again. So, bear with me, folks. And if you guys... If you guys find any of this stuff, information helpful, or very handy, let me know. I'll do some more worries to share with other people. Otherwise, I'm just another guy who's just... <laughs> trying to be famous on YouTube, just trying to just share stuff with people. But this is all I got for now, and... Hopefully, this is helpful with what I did. If not, I'll try to be better with the next video. So, happy modeling. Take it easy, guys. And I will talk to you again soon.